Hello guys and welcome to another KSP video. Today's video is going to be a recreation of the Falcon 9 Air. This is actually a really cool design and it's real interesting to see in real life. Uh, the story is, <laughs> sorry this uh, this project is actually quite interesting. So uh, before we launch uh, this, this thing KSP, uh, let's do a quick rundown of the real thing. So uh, the Falcon 9 Air was a partnership between uh, Strato Launch, SpaceX, and Dynetics, who are the uh, people that are making that uh, one lunar lander for Artemis, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the project was originally proposed in 2011 and uh, actually got quite far into development. A modified Falcon 9, well, uh, calling it a Falcon 9 is a bit of a stretch. It uh, only had four Merlin engines on, on the bottom stage, and, uh, but SpaceX did call it the uh, Falcon 9 Air, so uh, what gives? Uh, Falcon 9 would be launched from the shuttle launch aircraft, which is actually the biggest aircraft in the world by wingspan, and it is powered by a Pratt & Whitney PW4000 engines, which is uh, one of the more popular commercial uh, airliner engines, and it powered aircraft such as the uh, A300, A310, 747, 767, MD11, A330, and 777, so yeah, it's quite a bit of crap going on with that engine. Unfortunately, the project uh, was canceled in uh, 2012, just a year after development started. A uh, major factor was because uh, Dynetics, who were developing the release mechanism, had requested SpaceX to make changes to the Falcon 9 that they didn't really want to make, and uh, they called the contract ultimately uh, fell apart because uh, SpaceX uh, really just didn't want to take the Falcon 9 into, uh, into that direction and into an air launch type of uh, direction. So uh, that's kind of what happened with the Falcon 9 Air. So uh, let's get back to the KSP and get launching. All right, so here we are on the Kerbal Space Center runway with my recreation of the Falcon 9 Air on the Strato Launch plane. Strato Launch is actually pretty difficult to make because that the tail section of it is kind of, it's a really it's kind of like a very unique shape. So, uh, and uh, KSP is not known for having uniquely shaped parts or the ability to make unique shaped parts. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think I did okay. Uh, I don't know. Let me know. I mean, it's probably pretty trash. But uh, we are now starting our way down the runway with the Falcon 9 Air suspended between, uh, well, technically there's one aircraft. It kind of looks like two, but uh, uh, however you want to splice it, we are getting down the runway and getting ready to uh, lift that nose up. And there it comes. This thing has uh, major control authority problems at low speeds, so we have to we really have to get quite a bit of speed before we can actually get up in the air. But now we can get the time lapse going, and we can get our way up to our deployment altitude, which uh, for uh, this flight is going to be about four kilometers. The real one uh, goes up to about ten kilometers or nine and a half, I believe. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, um, the uh, J90 Goliath, which I'm using as uh, the analog for the PW4000 engines, uh, do not have enough thrust other than KSP to actually get up to that altitude. So unfortunately, we're going to have to be deploying quite a bit lower, but hey, uh, it still makes it because this uh, Falcon 9 Air technically is a little bit uh, overbuilt. Uh, the uh, skipper stage, uh, which is the bottom stage, which I'm using skippers as the Merlins, uh, have like in, like over a 2.0 thrust to weight ratio. So this thing like absolutely zooms once it gets into... Once it's under rocket mode, or once it's uh, propelled by the rocket, so uh, that's kind of nuts. Also, uh, in the plane, there's actually not a whole lot of information related to uh, this vehicle, but uh, from what I could uh, tell, there's actually no mention of uh, any sort of reusability for the Falcon 9 a bottom stage. I mean, this was back in like 2011, so this was uh, before SpaceX. Uh, that was this was uh, right around Grasshopper time, so this was before space. I mean, Grasshopper maybe even a little later. Uh, so this is before SpaceX was uh, really even doing any sort of reusability or landing boosters and crap. So uh, they probably would not have tried to reuse the Falcon 9 bottom stage. Uh, but hey, this is KSP, so we are going to do that because reusing stuff is fun. Uh, so uh, because there's not a whole lot of Delta V in the bottom stage, uh, we're not going to be doing a boost back wear. And we're going to be um, trying to set our trajectory kind of smartly so uh, the bottom stage can actually glide on over to the next peninsula over so like it's like the next landmass on our on our trajectory and it can hopefully land there on the nice nice flat land of land you know words right um i'm a great great speaker obviously i <laughs> wouldn't say um if i wasn't right uh i'm i'm uh, words uh, let's get back to what's going on in the video so uh, we're just about at 4 kilometers, which is our deployment altitude. So we're going to get ready to uh, deploy the uh, deploy the rocket. A uh, little bit of control problems with the thing. SAS was not cooperating uh, with this uh, plane. But uh, either way, we are now going to get the UI turned off because we have to make this look pretty epic. Right, epic moment. And deploying now. There we go. Firing up the four skipper engines. And we can get the time lapse going once again as we head on up to orbit. Um, 
reducing the throttle just a little bit because of the insane thrust to weight ratio it uh yeah it's it's really inefficient there's a lot of air resistance at this low altitude but i did have to virtually get the throttle back up not that longer uh long after because there's not a whole lot of control authority on this bottom stage because the skippers can't really gimbal and reducing the throttle makes it harder to gimbal them because you know you don't have as much authority so uh now we're getting to uh stage separation pretty quickly because those skippers use a lot of fuel pretty quick and now we can get our a booster a cam turned on as we see the uh Bottom stage in the top left corner there, getting ready to do its landing burn. We unfortunately did our, get our, didn't get our trajectory uh, perfect, so we're going to have to do a little bit of a burn at Apoaps with the booster so it can actually get to the... Uh, get to its intended destination. Now it can flip backwards and begin to do its descent. Uh, as that happens, our... Uh, Falcon 9 is just about getting its Apple app set as it gets ready to get into orbit. I've not even talked about what we're going to do with our uh, our uh, Falcon 9. Uh, I will talk about that right after the uh, right after the booster lands. We're going to get it into full screen mode right now as I uh, pop open the air brakes on the booster, which actually slow the thing down by quite a bit. If you look at that velocity, it is like going down. So as we get nice and low, we can reignite the skipper engines and do our uh, landing burn just being nice and nice and you know conservative with the throttle we don't want to be doing anything too crazy pull like 35 g's we also don't have a whole lot of fuel to land with so we have to come down pretty quick coming down now just uh, there we go a little bit of wobbly wobblies but we have made it welcome back to Kerbin, mr booster which is having major weird engine stuff but to turn off sas and we have made it so now we can check back up on the Second stage, which is now in orbit, uh, basically in orbit, it has to do with planning the burn right now to do our orbital insertion burn. Uh, what we are going to be doing today is rendezvousing and docking with uh, a space station you guys haven't actually seen before. It's a new space station. It's actually a really cool space station. I really like how it looks. Um, it's a, it's not completely finished yet. I have it, I have planning to do a video on it, and I have um, the main core module uh, launched, but there are some other uh, uh, radially attached modules which also have to go onto the station. So I uh, do look forward to that video, you know, uh, for uh, building anticipation. Uh, that's what you're supposed to do, right? So we're going to be docking. These Kerbals are going to hypothetically be, you know, checking up on the progress of the station, make sure all the workers are staying in line, getting the station operational. That's, that's, I guess that that's the story we're going with. Uh, they uh, SpaceX did have plans to human rate the Falcon 9 Air, so this will be the version of that. And this is the only, the human rated version is the only one that actually had any sort of rendering or like diagram to look at. So uh, that's the reason we're doing the human version or the Kerbal version. Um, that is going to be the plan for the remainder of this video uh, as we just do our little docking burn or whatever you'd want to call that rendezvous burn uh, as we uh, approach the station i would like to uh, thank everyone who has subscribed in the last few days doing the plugs i know right guys it's plug time um yeah uh we're hit that we had a crazy like 40 subscriber day as the station comes into you know i'm ready to go up the station i don't know um yeah, so thank you everyone subscribed, and we're looking like today, as of recording, might actually be another pretty big subscribe day. So I have a goal to hit 2,000 subs by the end of the year, so that actually may be doable if we keep doing it, guys. Subscribe button, you guys. Yeah, and all sincerity, you guys you guys are epic, so thanks everyone for uh, for subbing, and anyone joining the Discord. Uh, yeah, thank you all for joining the Discord. Discord's getting pretty big. We're almost, I believe, up to 300 members, so that's pretty epic. It's, it's great talking to you guys on the Discord, uh, and, you know, engaging with the community. I don't know. I think it's pretty fun. Um... Yeah, so there'll be a link in the description if you want to join the Discord. We also do weekly challenges, so if that's something you want to, you know, be a part of. We do, we do fun challenges. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's that. Um, you know, actually kind of crazy how many of my viewers I've found on, like, other channels. Like, I've been looking around. Like, you know, I some some people showed me a channel. Like, hey, check out this small channel. And I saw, like, three of my viewers in the comment section. I'm like, oh, that's pretty epic. And then I thought, like, how much further does this extend to? So I went to, like, I went to Matt, one of Matt Lowndes' videos, and I thought I saw, like, another three or four. So... Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty crazy. It's actually kind of nuts, so I can, like, start to recognize people. So that, that's, that's epic. Um, but we are now here at the station. I'm opening up my docking port. I, I forgot to put SAS on this, uh, on this vehicle, so we just have to use engine power. That's why my docking alignment isn't very good. So here we are coming into the section. This actually section will, should be able to rotate. Uh, it's, it's kind of, it's actually pretty epic. Um, my, my friend helped with this project a lot, so, uh, thank you, thanks to him. Um, and here we are just doing our docking as we start to get a little bit of the wigglies and docking. And, uh, oh, oh, 
Ooh, starting to get a little bit. Oh no, that's a lot of wigglies. Oh my wigglies. Oh, it looks like looks like the cracker has decided to show up today. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. Oh now the top is spinning. Oh everything is spinning and oh my god. Oh, geez, I think they, yeah, it's it's cracking day today. Okay, we we're having a major cracking attack. We got to get out of here before the capsule gets destroyed. Go go go! Undock undock! Come on, get out of here, Kerbals. Yes. All right, they're free. So we're just gonna <laughs> we're gonna leave the station to do its uh. Do, do its business as it uh, kind of has a bit of a meltdown right now. So I guess I guess the progress is not good. Um, <laughs> so I guess the Kerbals will have to report that back to their supervisor. Um, oh, geez, that is that's a bad. Let's just let's just do our let's do our reentry. Um, so yeah, last thing to do is uh, deorbit ourselves. Uh, we're gonna deorbit ourselves over the desert because why not? Desert's a cool place to deorbit. And here we are just finishing up the burn and we're going to detach the uh, capsule and retract the solar panel because that wouldn't be a good thing to leave open during uh, re-entry. And we can make our way back through the uh, through the atmosphere. So uh, that was a pretty good mission aside from the Kraken attack that uh, kind of and all the dead Kerbals on the plane. Other than that perfectly good mission as we uh, as we descend ourselves down through the down down through the lower atmosphere now just through our uh, peak heating and what is that there's like a little target over there so i'm actually i get really curious about this so i deploy the parachute on the capsule and then i eva a kerbal because i want to fly this kerbal out and go investigate what's going on um what that weird uh, craft is that looks like it's landed um i actually had uh, actually had no idea what this uh what this is so it'll be a learning experience for all of us uh yeah it's actually off it's kind of crazy how far you can get uh, with kerbals in their eva pack like we are not their eva pack their parachute like we're getting we're gonna get like 20 plus kilometers or we could have theoretically gotten that if you deployed high enough like if you can glide like pretty far we we're only not going that far because we're like diving down to try and get to our little place so that's pretty epic uh yeah well for, what is this what is this thing it looks like it is a discarded stage oh we did it actually this is actually really interesting after coming from a very graceful landing with the Kerbal you'll see in a second. Uh, this is the uh, Centaur uh, upper stage from my SRBX video. I should put a card up in the top right there. Um, I am actually very confused as to how this thing showed up here because uh, that thing was left in orbit and there's a bad landing. Uh, I left that thing went into orbit, I believe, in that video. I'm pretty sure it did. Like that that thing should have been in orbit. Like where how did it get out? how did it get down here? Um Oh wait, no. There's a probe cron. I must have deorbited. That's how that happened. Oh well. Uh, well, good to see it survived. Um, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please write a comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.